despite its reputation as a fun-filled wonderland, aka the home of wonder and delight, Alton Towers has become a place laced with tragedy, trauma, suffering, and regret for the 16 individuals who sadly lost more than just their body limbs that day. What exactly happened on June 2nd, 2015? How did a ride on a roller coaster instantly transform the lives of 16 people? And is there a chance it may occur again? Join us as we delve into the tragic tale of the Alton Towers accident, which took the legs of two young women and left 14 others with serious injuries. Alton Towers is a resort and amusement park that spans over 500 acres in the scenic Staffordshire countryside. The park is renowned for being able to host more than 1 million guests during the height of its busy season, and it has garnered widespread recognition for the indelible mark it leaves on each and every one of its guests. However, the park made a far more permanent mark on the riders of the Smiler roller coaster on June 2nd, 2015. It left a frightening nightmare come true imprinted in their minds. The Smiler is the most popular ride of the park and holds the record for being the first roller coaster in the world to include 14 loops. The ride's popularity stemmed from the fact that it could reach speeds of up to 85 miles per hour and produce G-forces of more than four for up to 16 riders at once. People absolutely cherished it. However, in the summer of 2015, everything changed. On this Tuesday, attendance at Alton Tower was unusually high for a weekday. By midday, the park was already halfway full. Even though most of the rides were working normally, the Smiler was the most popular. The Smiler had only been open for two years, but it had already been an instant hit with people from all over the world. The wait time on the line that day was at least an astounding hour long. Everyone was working hard to keep the park operating properly since it was extremely busy for a weekday. Additionally, the day was quite windy, with peak gusts of about 46 miles per hour. At the time, this gust of wind constituted a threat, since Gerstlauer, the Smiler's maker, had warned that the ride should not be used in winds faster than 34 miles per hour. But the limitation was broken, and the ride worked at its maximum capacity to the point that the attraction stopped working properly at roughly 1 o'clock p.m. The attraction was immediately shut down, and the park's maintenance crew hurried to the scene to fix the problem. The park's management took note of this downtime and decided to increase the ride's capacity from four trains to five. With this change, they were able to accommodate more passengers at once and reduce the length of the lines for the roller coaster. But this was a serious mistake, because they hadn't informed the maintenance crew about the new train, and as such, they had doomed the riders. About 45 minutes after the problem was found, the attraction reopened, and the empty train began making its way around the track as required by law. This was done to give the train's operating staff time to inspect it for problems before passengers boarded. However, they made one more fatal error. See, before the train went around in a circle, the crew failed to put water dummies in the train. But these dummies are crucial to the climb because they provide weight where it's needed most, allowing the train to easily navigate curves and inclines. So, the absence of water weight and the strong winds caused a disaster to brew. After the train began its round, it began veering back and forth for two minutes before eventually coming to a stop at the base of a loop. But this was just the beginning of the calamity that would unfold since another train carrying people was already on the route. Because of a safety device known as the block section, the passengers on the train were originally brought to a halt on the first slope. The block section saw the train empty before time and halted the train full of people to avert a collision. Unfortunately, the operating team still hadn't told the maintenance crew about the fifth train, so the maintenance crew mistook the block section for a misfire and let the train continue on its fatal path. After being released from the stop, the train was only in motion for a few minutes before it crashed head-on with the empty train, effectively dooming everyone. All 16 passengers were hurt almost instantly, and one woman in her 40s had to be airlifted to the hospital because she was bleeding internally for an extended period of time. Two young women had such severe injuries that doctors were forced to amputate their legs in the aftermath of the tragedy. One of these unlucky women was Leah Washington, 
who was just 17 at the time, and had come to the park with her then-boyfriend Joe Pugh, who was 19. The Barnsley couple had been dating for a week when they decided to spend some quality time together at the park. They had no idea of the horrors that were waiting for them. Recalling the accident as the longest 30 minutes of my life, Leah said, My legs were caught between the safety bar and the seat in front. Terrified and in excruciating pain, I was quickly losing sensation in my left leg. Leah was in the front seat when the train hit, sending one of her legs flying into the metal of the car at about 50 miles per hour. Leah said that she had asked Joe for his phone so she could contact her mom, but he had declined, saying, My finger is hanging off. Joe had fractured two fingers and his kneecap, and his knee was absolutely destroyed. Joe's arms and legs were cast after the pair was transported to the hospital. Unfortunately for Leah, she awoke to discover that much of her left leg was gone. To spare her life, doctors had to amputate her above the knee. Her entire existence thereafter revolved around physical therapy, hospital visits, and adjusting to her artificial limb. Joe's kneecap would mend, but he'd be in the adult trauma unit until then. He'd never use his fingers again. Both of them had to adjust to a new way of life with lasting disabilities, and they both had to rely solely on themselves, all of which put pressure on their relationship. Thankfully, the pair tied the knot, and now they're starting their own lives together, with Leah forging a successful career as a lingerie model. Late in 2015, Alton Tower said that the crash was caused by a mistake made by a person. Due to a drop in visitors while the park was closed for safety checks on all the rides, Merlin Entertainments, the creators of the park, has been looking at ways to cut costs to keep the park's business going. These include restructuring the park, making people redundant, and closing the park during quieter periods. Because of these unfortunate events, the previous year will go down in history as the worst for the amusement park. As a result of the negligence of their employees and the terrible disaster that might have been averted, the park will have to pay a fine of almost five million pounds. Following the events of that year, the park subsequently implemented a large number of new safety procedures in order to protect the lives of a large number of visitors. To begin, they made certain that the ride would not function in wind gusts of around 35 miles per hour. They also installed more closed-circuit televisions at the rides and ensured that all of the employees went through updated safety training. And although the park has never had an accident since, the accident has made the park safer for everyone. The people of the Staffordshire countryside and the victims of the accident will never forget the day that Alton Towers stood in fear.